Fixed Camera Resident Evil games. The classics. They have a special place in my heart, and in the hearts of many. Some people like to dismiss the old games as unplayable because of tank controls, but I played those games growing up, and I didn't think about the control style. I thought about how amazing the game looked. And it's not about the graphics, it's about the artistic presentation. Classic Resident Evil games feel like you're controlling a character in a movie through the lens of the camera. I always found it so captivating. My mom would watch me play RE1 and comment that she felt like she was watching a movie. That's because of the fixed camera. Cinematography is an art. Photographers will take excruciatingly long periods of time just trying to capture a shot from a certain angle with the lighting just right. Different lenses for focus. So much goes into how photos are taken and how movies are filmed. When I look at classic Resident Evil games, I see the attention to detail put into every angle you see. How they frame shots to set up jump scares. Running down a hallway in Resident Evil 3 to suddenly see a creature run across the wall and then it's gone when you turn around to inspect. High up angles that make you feel like you're spectating the action that you're controlling. Like the alley behind the gun shop in RE2. Long horizontal angles showing the intimidating size of the dining room in RE1. Fixed camera angles provide us with intimate moments and rare close-ups of characters. We get to see what our characters look like instead of seeing the back of their head for the entire game. Camera angles can create dread as we don't know what's waiting around the corner. They can draw our attention to important items so we don't need to have gamey indicators on screen. They can create a sense of drama, tension, or wonder. Hello, I'm Under the Mayo, and today I'm talking about my personal top 25 camera angles of Resident Evil. I'll be sticking to the core numbered series 1, 2, and 3, including the 2002 GameCube remake, which tends to use similar angles to the original, they just look way better. Rounding out the bottom of this list at number 25 is the Cabin in the Woods. When you leave the mansion in the remake of RE1, you're taken on a new path through the woods. You have no idea where this path is going. Passing through the cemetery and trees, everything shrouded in darkness, and you hear a haunting scream in the distance. Eventually you come across a cabin, presented from a low angle. Your character is in the foreground, but your attention is entirely consumed by the mysterious cabin, daring you to enter. Creepy, but also inviting at the same time. Just a beautiful angle. Number 24, the RPD second floor west side angle. It's tempting to pick the first angle as the best representation of the RPD, and maybe it is. But there's something about this distant second floor angle that better shows the scale of this strange place. You can feel the emptiness of this dead police station, hearing your footsteps echo and seeing so much of the room around you from this spectator angle. Number 23, the RE Remake West Side Moonlit Hallway. Many locations of the Spencer Mansion, while darkly lit, are still at least lit, albeit conservatively. Finally opening the armor key door at the end of the winding west side hallway leads you into a dark room only illuminated by the night sky through the windows. It's a striking color change, drawing your attention to the window and the dust reflecting in the moonlight. Moving past this angle takes you to one of the most menacing hallways in the Resident Evil series, the wall painted by the shadows of zombies at the windows trying to claw their way in. Number 22, the RE1 Laboratory Entrance. After a game full of locations that are not too out of the ordinary, draining the water here to reveal a descending staircase that leads to an elevator creates a sense of wonder. Where does it lead? What could be hidden below this secret entrance? The dramatic top-down angle displays the darkness below, intensifying the mystery. Number 21, the RE3 street leading to the bar. The streets in this section are presented fairly conventionally, but this one angle set near the ground slightly upwards almost makes you see how it would feel to be sitting on the stairs outside your apartment, just watching the events that are unfolding. Number 20, the RE3 stairway entrance to the park. This one is a little hard to explain, but I think I like it so much because it's such a dramatic presentation to a new area. You've spent the last sections in the streets and in a fairly normal looking hospital, and then you've got this exaggerated downward angle of a large staircase leading to the park, which leads to a significant environment change for the game. It's presented in a way to be exciting and intriguing. Number 19, the RE1 second floor main hall. 
The main hall of the mansion is the most iconic room of the original trilogy, only rivaled by the main hall of the RPD in RE2. It was hard to pick the angle that best represents this legendary location, but when it comes down to it, what's the image that comes to my mind first when I think of the mansion? It's this one. Looking down at the giant staircase and old carpet, brightly lit, giving you that long look at the huge empty room. Number 18, the RE1 Remake's outside look at the mansion. You spend so much time inside the mansion, and when you leave it in the original, you never really get to have a good look at this giant place. The remake's path through the woods has one angle that you may have overlooked since you're so consumed by the look of the area around you, but this angle gives a rare look at the mansion from the outside, showing just how far you've come. Number 17, the RE1 Second Floor Dining Room. The dining room is one of the biggest rooms in the series, and while you do get a good look at it from a few angles on the first floor, the left side of the second floor shows almost the entire view of this incredible space. Beautiful mixes of red, white, and brown colors create a very memorable view. Number 16, the far view of the RE3 Stagla gas station. Stagla, how can you play this game and not remember that awesome name? Stagla. This is one of the most pulled back, distant camera angles in the entire series. Not just showing a massive room, but an entire city location, the gas station, and all the cars in front of it. Truly one of the most memorable shots found in the classic games, one that establishes the real believable city you're exploring. Number 15, the RE2 train car elevator to the laboratory. I can't talk about this angle without giving credit to Neryl and his incredible video on fixed camera angles. I had never noticed the brilliance of this angle, but I know that I felt it on a subconscious level. And that's what a lot of great cinematography does, it moves you or manipulates you without you ever noticing. On your first playthrough of RE2, you've spent hours in the police station, the basement, the sewers, and now you've reached the outside. You feel liberated finally seeing the night sky. You can feel that it's almost over, the very low to the ground camera angle pushing your attention forward in a hopeful way. I can't explain it better than Neryl did, so go watch his video. Number 14, the RE1 Remake Bathroom in the Guardhouse. Another gorgeous top-down angle. I'm a big fan of those. The dark and creepy small room, with the camera set behind the rotating hypnotic ceiling fan. It's one of the first angles that comes to mind whenever I think of the RE1 Remake. Number 13, the RE1 Staircase on the east side. Another top-down angle this time in a two-floor open space. The brown tones and bright light coming from the chandelier above you make the room feel very different than the others you've seen, and seeing the stairs fully presented, winding upwards towards the camera, invites you to ascend and explore. Number 12, the RE1 entrance to the giant snake. Most of your adventure through the mansion has been filled with long series of hallways, twisting and turning, giant open spaces like the dining room or the main hall. There's a few smaller rooms, bedrooms, save rooms, but rarely are we in such a small space as this one. It's a low angle of a very small room creating a sense of unease, but also strongly drawing your attention to the elevated door, with a bloody handprint warning of what's to come. The corner to the left is a blind spot that hides a zombie that's easy to be surprised by. It's one of the creepiest doors in the series. And just as a little anecdote, when I rented RE1 as a kid, it had a scratch on the CD. And whenever I got to this door, the game froze. So what was behind this door remained a mystery for me for months until I could buy it. Number 11, the RE Remake Entrance to the Guardhouse. The Guardhouse of RE1, original and remake, is a huge change of location. The entire place is a wooden structure, the sound of your footsteps on the creaking wood, new horrors awaiting you. But you don't know what this place is going to be when you first open that door. And the very first camera angle you're presented with doesn't show you anything about this new location. Your anticipation is instead met with a low close-up angle, only showing you in the doorway that you just passed through, leaving you wondering for a couple seconds more, what's waiting for me as I step forward? All right, now we're getting into the top 10, and I'm really excited to talk about these. I just want to say this was not easy. Aside from a few obvious personal choices, picking a top 10 took a long time as I went through all the games thinking about how I feel about each standout angle. Number 10, the RE3 Crashed Bus. 
Do I even need to explain this one? It's a beautiful upwards angle, showing the gravity of the Raccoon City disaster. If a destroyed bus can end up where it is in this image, you know things got really bad. It's impossible to not want to stare at this gorgeous background, but dogs ambush you. I personally struggle to pay attention because I just want to take in the atmosphere. Number 9. The RE Remake First Lab Hallway Talk about a well-framed shot. Walking towards the camera is always tense in a Resident Evil game, and this shot combines the tension of a brand new location with the sounds of zombies off-screen and a beautiful gloomy atmosphere, water puddles on the ground, and very sparse lighting. The few light sources there are reflecting off the metal above you, spider webs on the side rail, your reflection in the water and a zombie coming around the corner, an excellent example of what you can do with fixed camera. Number 8. The RE3 Street View of the RPD This angle originally didn't stand out to me. Like so many camera angles, it can be easy to fly by and not notice how amazing they are. After making your way through the initial section of winding streets and neighborhoods of Raccoon City, Jill makes her way to the RPD from RE2, but she enters through the main entrance. Multiple great camera angles are found on this street, but this one takes the cake. The first true shot of the complete RPD, and it's massive. We've never been able to see this location in its entirety, at least not in the core series, and it's beautiful. You can just look at this image and think of so many memories. Number 7. The RE2 Liquor Hallway Window Shot Another angle talked about in Neryl's video about fixed camera. Entering this strange new place, a police station that definitely doesn't look like it belongs in this building, you enter the west side with no idea what's waiting for you. Approaching the hallway door, you see a strange creature scurry across the window. After opening the door, the camera switches to outside the building. Now, these outside camera angles went on to be used a lot in the RE1 remake, but as far as I can remember, I never saw them before RE2. RE2 introduces this angle right after the liquor reveal at the window to make you feel like you're being watched. It's very effective at setting the mood, and it's definitely an angle for this specific moment, because after passing through this angle, it never triggers again for the rest of the game. Number 6. The Courtyard Pool in the RE1 Remake I remember being so impressed by that basic cutscene as a kid, spending hours in the mansion and then making it outside and draining the pool. I was fascinated by the cinematic power of the PlayStation 1, and then the remake made it so much better. But the real treasure here is the camera angle showing the scale of this space. Your character now small in the frame, stepping down the ladder, seeing the puddles of remaining water on the walkway. Just a beautiful shot. Number 5. The Guardhouse Recreation Room in the RE1 Remake by this point, you know that I like dramatic angles that guide your attention. Well, this is one of the big ones. The angles leading up to the recreation room are mainly shown from the top, angled or directly above you. Then you open the double doors and the game suddenly flips the camera down to the ground, looking up at you, as a giant spider crawls into frame on the ceiling. One of the best holy sh** moments in the entire series, especially considering you haven't seen a spider before this. Number 4. The RE3 Clock Tower Piano Room Another angle that makes this list because of the scare it sets up. The piano room is at first a quiet area, as you pass through it as Jill. Crossing it again triggers zombies to break through the large glass windows, and this is how the room stays for a long time, passing through it to use the save station here and there. When you take control of Carlos after Jill is infected by the Nemesis, you spend a long time outside of the clock tower, in the hospital finding a treatment. When you finally make it back, the Nemesis ambushes you in the main hall of the clock tower. You continue to make your way towards Jill, and the last thing you expect is to see Nemesis flying towards you through the window out of the flames. An excellently timed and framed jump scare. Number 3. The RE1 Remake West Extension Hallway The RE1 Remake added several new areas to beloved maps, one of the best being the new section on the west side that takes you around a creepy corridor to a staircase that leads to the awesome mirrored hallway section on the second floor. It's a brand new place for veterans coming from the original game, and they make it suitably unnerving. The first angle is already excellent and could have made this list, seeing your character in a nice close shot as the moonlight pours in, particles hanging in the air. You creep your way around the corner, the game is still not showing you what's in front of you, then it's this brilliant shot right here. 
As the long shadows stretch across the walls, the light from the distant chandelier bobbing up and down, your footsteps muffled by the old carpet and the dark wooden staircase summoning you at the end, not knowing what might be around the corner. It's camera angles like this that represent pretty much everything I love about fixed camera survival horror. I'll take the clumsy tank controls and simplistic combat options if it means I get to experience this. Number two, and this one is a bit more subtle, but it's always stuck out to me. The RE2 bus location with the dining table. The opening sections of RE2 are all about establishing the disastrous state the city is in. Leon's long trek to the RPD hoping it'll be safe. We see crashed cars and fires, the dead eating in the streets. But this shot right here, Leon in the background, walking towards the camera, our attention drawn not to this space, but to the corner of the screen. This dead man bent over the table. I always found myself wondering, what happened to him? Was he bitten? Was he killed by accident in the citywide panic? I never quite understood what I'm looking at. It looks like metal bars are sticking out of his back, and those bars look like part of a flipped over chair. But why would a chair be coming through his back? I don't know. Was he a zombie and someone killed him with a chair? Regardless, this lone dead guy in the foreground communicates the horrors of the situation in a way that's different and more intimate than giant raging fires and crashed cars and people being torn apart in the street. There's a sadness to this image, and you just don't get to see that side of things all the time. And finally, number one, my personal pick for the best camera angle in all of classic Resident Evil, the RE1 remake Laboratory Giant Fan. Just look at it. It needs no explanation. It's simply perfect. It's menacing. And you don't even have to go down this path. You could miss this shot entirely. What a shame if you do. It's impossible for me to play this game and not take a moment to sit and appreciate the artistry here. I don't have a lot more to say. I like the giant fan. I also love the giant fan in Silent Hill 1. Again, a space you don't even have to enter, but you're missing something special if you don't. Just one more look. Man, that's nice. I want to thank everyone who stayed to the end and watched this whole list. And those of you who skipped to the end, hello. Now go back and watch the rest because there's a lot of good stuff here. Will we ever get another fixed camera Resident Evil game? I doubt it. But at least the indie horror scene is making its best attempt. Check out Elisa and Tormented Souls for some old school survival horror action. Like and subscribe, check out my movie club videos. If you want to support projects like this, check me out on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.